प्लवाहे ते अदृढ़ा अष्टादशोत्तम वरम ये तेयो ये भिनंदी मूढ़ा जरा मृत्यु ते पुनरेवा प्लवाहे ते अदृढ़ा अष्टादशोत्तम वरम ये कर्मा ये तेयो ये भिनंदी मूढ़ा जरा मृत्यु ते पुनरेवा पियंतीमोलिशिंग इट वेरीली दीज आर सेट टू बी द फ्रील रैप्स इन द फॉर्म ऑफ द एटीन फोल सैक्रिफाइ सैक्रिफाइजेस कॉन्स्टिट्यूटिंग इंफीरियर एक्शन अवश कर्म अवश कर्म इंफीरियर एक्शन अवशम सॉरी अवरम कर्म अष्टो अष्टादशोत्तम वरम अवरम अवरम मीन इंफीरियर प्लवाक्स अदृढ़ा फ्रेल रैक्स what will happen to a raft which is frail it will only take you to a point then it will break down it is not going to take you to a destination very weak crafts they who acclaim this as the highest good are the favorite words of the gurus mudha fools there are many 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 people out there believe that these rituals are the highest they who consider them acclaim them as the highest are fools they are subjected time and again to old age jara mrityum and death puna api again and again time and again they are subjected to old age and death the samsara they return i tell you so powerful so so powerful but sadly nobody highlights this the gurus today must highlight this not encouraging fanatic attachment to their religion not fanatic attachment to the ritualistic practices and their beliefs this should be taught even i am not being heard now how many of you are making noise about it nobody you you also were dismissing it right away so who will the how will the world know nobody will know hmm? so if you follow the thought in the part part 1 section 2 he starts by giving mentioning of the ritual or the fire ritual he says it is good for the practitioner because the the practitioner was a karma kandist he was inclined towards the, the ritual he was ritualistic student so he prescribed him he prescribed the ritual in the previous two mantras he he ridicules it by exposing you are all working it for a fruit in mind it only gives you brahma loka he ridicules it exposes its limitation now he is dismissing it and demolishing it see how a guru leads you from where you are to where you need to be he gives you what you need he tells you its limitations and then he says go beyond it so the frail rafts so what is the frail raft here sinha is would it be i'm guessing would it be the temporary life no sir why you have to guess you must think along with the guru no why are you guessing game going on here are you playing rummy or what Huh? 
Are you been with me? Yes. What is he saying? Uh, translation, please, Gayatrima. Now, Sinha, can you please read the translation, sir? Verily, these are said to be frail rafts in the form of 18 fold sacrifices constituting inferior action. Right. Now, the answer lies in this first half of the verse or the mantra. So he says, these are said to be frail rafts. So the question is, what is the frail raft? Now, what is he referring these to? Inferior action being action which has got a motive behind it. Mm -hmm. You can say so. But directly in the mantra, what is he saying? The inferior action here refers to refers to what? The inferior, uh, so the frail raft are the boats of ritualism. And then he qualifies the ritualism as to the 18 fold sacrifices. So the ritual is 18 fold. There are 16 priests. The Ritwik, the 16 priests, the householder, the Grahastha, and the wife, the Grahani. So these 16 priests, the householder and his wife form the 18 fold members who perform this ritual. And he calls this as a frail raft. Hey, fellows are stuck to it. He's dismissing it, obviously. They are inferior action. What would they give you? Sinha, this inferior action, what would they give? Why, why does he call them inferior? It's always comparative, isn't it? But Guruji, I don't understand if bhakti is one of the pathways. Why is he condemning it? Now, why are you considering for... So do you mean to say bhakti is just mere mechanical ritual? Ritualistic in nature. If so, is that what bhakti is? If your concept of bhakti is to perform rituals, then that is not bhakti. Then you must understand that he is dismissing it. Bhakti is not performance of ritual. Bhakti is the is love for your loved. Is it to be measured with what gifts you give? Which restaurant or which hotel you take them or which holiday you take them, is that the measure of your love to your family? You express your love in many ways. Every time you see a child, you don't have to give a gift to your child. You can just go and hug your child, kiss, a, kiss your child. And that is an expression of love. It doesn't need any, any greater expression of giving a gift or an expensive gift. So the various rituals you perform is a means of connecting and attuning to Brahman. But what is happening is bhakti is that feeling towards God. In the earlier sessions, uh, you, were, you were not there, those sessions. I'm taking that which belongs to God and offering back to God. What is the great thing I'm doing? Isn't everything belongs to him? So what sense does it make to take what it belongs to him and give it to him and say, I'm offering to you? Is that, is that what bhakti is? No. Bhakti is that feeling of gratefulness for what you already have been provided with. An indebtedness. An indebtedness that you can never pay back. So such a 
whole hearted thankfulness for what i've been blessed with so far in my life that feeling of fullness is bhakti that feeling of expression of that fullness is bhakti you can express in whatever way you want but those who perform the ritual without thanking the lord for what has been provided they are rather performing the ritual to satisfy their ends with a motive such people are holding on to inferior action that is not bhakti that's why he calls them as frail rafts so you bring that blemish of motive into your prayer into your relationship it spoils it all it destroys it that's what he's saying the you're, you're performing with with a motive man that is not what it is you get the point sir yeah i i i get it um i'm trying to understand uh, through millennia uh, there have been offerings um its offerings is almost i don't know whether it's as old as the text and offerings are all what god has made and we are giving it back to him and how does that connect with uh, this frail raft versus virtuous deeds of offering how how does how does the differentiation take place where is the differentiation i'm called in the gita the ninth chapter even there you are not there so i have to mention it for record he says which verse is that he says patram pushpam phalam toyam yo me bhaktya prayachati hmm i'm not wrong oh, look at that hmm in the ninth chapter of the gita in 26th verse he says patram pushpam phalam toyam yo me bhaktya prayachati tadaham bhaktyu pahritam ashnami prayatatmanah all it means is whoever with devotion offers me a mere leaf a flower a fruit water i accept the devout offering of the striving self so it's not how grand or how majestic or how monumental is your offering but even a mere leaf or a flower if it is a devout offering of the striving self i accept so what is important in the ritual is that feeling of please i would i would suggest in her if you could get hold of that sir so amitama would have please share it could have been maybe a 3 4 weeks ago 2 3 weeks ago we have done this verse very recent feature please listen to that ninth chapter 26th verse where he, he says the accent is on you having that feeling of gratitude a feeling of thankfulness it's not as much in the offering the offering is only a means to convey your feeling it's all if you understand it's it's absolutely ridiculous that as you also rightly said i'm taking what belongs to him and gives to him i come to your house on your birthday and and by the way belated birthday i i was not much into the uh media i didn't know vishnu was telling me yesterday it was sinha uncle's birthday so i said i live in the present not in the past but since i'm talking to you i'm slipping into the past and wishing you belated wishes it was just a day before yesterday right i come to you on your birthday to your home uninvited so you know invited me but i come because of my love to you i come uninvited to your home and as i see the beautiful pieces of you know uh, what do you call what do you call them show pieces uh, various exhibits in the house so i take one beautiful piece and i give it to you happy birthday sinha 
for a moment you look at me and say what is this he has taken something from my house from my shelf he gives back to me and wishes me happy birthday and then he gets comfortable and starts enjoying the hospitality you fellow can't think can't you bring even a patram pushpam a flower or a leaf you can't bring the audacity of that is is as audacious as that but what am i doing what is important is 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 there a feeling for you not what i brought to offer or give you so the accent in is on that feeling of gratitude not what you offer that's what is highlighted in that verse and and that's that's where the accent is so we should not get carried away by the mere performance or the mere ritual so the frail raft here refers to the the ritualistic practices here it also refers to the inferior action inferior action here refers to the actions which are performed with a motive that he calls them as frail rafts because it only takes you to a point it's unsteady it doesn't have in it to take you to the destination the goal and also the important point is we all do realize that rituals are an integral part of our spiritual journey we all have to invariably perform rituals but when these rituals are performed as an end in itself then they become frail rafts but when you use them as a means to an end as a symbolizing the ideal in the idol if i use and attune to the ideal in the idol then it's a vehicle not a frail raft it's a i'm trying to get to the right uh, marine technology it can be a warship or a, sub, a nuclear submarine so not a mere frail raft yes sir so guru ji time in memorial when um these offerings used to be given from the days of of old has the flavor changed from i mean i know there are temples in india where they go and throw their gold ornaments in onto the as an offering um and and it seems like there is a lack of effort to correct that intent what has happened there i mean i i it's it's so widely and deeply done that the differentiation becomes difficult now sir the yeah. from time immemorial from long millennium these ritualistic parts are different divisions or different parts of the same vedas but this section of the vedas are actually denouncing the other section of the vedas karma kanda is also a part another anga of the vedas and the upanishads which are the highest declarations of the vedas are denouncing the lower then you may ask why did they give the karma kanda because they realized everybody is not designed for the higher knowledge so they had to bring them along the journey right leading them up to the highest truths which is what we are attempting to understand even so even in the upanishad the guru is talking of the ritual it was so much an integral part of the practices then but a true guru will lead you up to the higher not let you get stuck up to the path as an and the means the journey and the the journey may be beautiful drive but you are not interested in you may enjoy the drive but you should not get stuck in the on the way isn't it you say let me put up a camp because it's a beautiful pleasant place and then you start saying let me stay put here for a a few days and then you forget where you are going so you set up a permanent have family there you know you got into a relationship and then you said lovely people lovely village lovely life what what a beautiful and you forgotten where you're going that's what they're condemning use this as a means but don't get stuck to it okay 
So this is a, these rituals must be used as, as Vijayji told me privately, a stable ferry. Huh? A nuclear submarine, sir. Very safe, sir. People would, you become a terror for others. So use it in the, in the right way. It takes you further. Hmm? I'll just take Harish's clarification and then I'll, I'll come back to this verse. Uh, Guruji, uh, earlier you mentioned when we uh, when we have when we do prayers with motive or have relationships with motives, we blemish the essence of the relationships of the motive. So, Guruji, while we are growing in the spiritual field, we are working towards having less motive with the world. But mm. the world has a lot of motive with us per se. 99% mm. of the world has a motive with us. How do we how do we calibrate ourselves towards dealing with the world when we may have lesser and lesser motives going forward, but the world keeps having a lot of motives with us individually? How to address this, Guruji? You see, if the world carries a motive, it is that nature that it's that is the nature of the world. You must understand that. So you, you can't sit and complain why they are, why it is like that. Like you don't complain summer is hot, don't you? You adapt to it. You, you, therefore, if you find that the world carries a motive to whatever that they do, you must accept it and, 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 and be careful with it. That you don't become a victim of their uh, motives. Because they are trying to abuse you for their own well-being. So you should not become a victim of their motive-driven actions. People want to, uh, in the business world, people want to abuse your, your, your kind-hearted nature, goodwill. They want to be unscrupulous, you know. They, they try to be, uh, they may even malign you. They may distribute you just to get ahead of you and score for their own well-being. You must understand that there will be people, all kinds of atrocities they can do just to get benefit themselves. You be, first understand them. Secondly, ensure you don't become a victim of their actions. All right, Harish? Yes, Thank you. Yes, uh, Hariji. Guruji, uh, can we use the uh, rituals to come from plurality to duality? Sir, please do not use terms which we are not using nor use in the entire text or the entire class. You have You're trying to, I may have said whole Vedanta in my whole life. Why yeah, but do you have, we to have talk? No, did we use the word and, plurality and duality this whole class? They, these uh, terms are not uh, new. This we have used in it the is class. New, it is new to the context. It's a new concept you're asking. You're connecting ritualism to duality and plurality. How is that connected to the context, sir? Please tell me. You tell me. I can answer the question, but I'm trying to draw your attention to using concepts out of context. Now, I can, as a, as a blink of an eye, I can relate to how you must be charitable to everybody else in the classroom. Will everybody follow the line of thought? Anything that you can take it independently with me, sir. I'll be more than happy to clarify, but please be mindful that am I, am I in the class, a part of the class, and am I taking the class along with me? Because first of all, now I must explain for some of them who don't understand what is the concept of plurality, the concept of duality, and then the concept of non-dual. And then get to your question, because I can't just answer you. I must take everybody else in 
along with me. That's my job. So the question is unmindful of the context and it is out of context as far as the, the verse is concerned. So I would kindly request you to connect independently with me as far as this question or any such questions so that we are mindful. And I hope you understand where I'm coming from. It's not, not to answer, but just to be mindful, sir. Please. Okay, Ji. Okay. All right. Thank you. We'll come back. Om Pur Namada Pur Namidam Pur Nar Pur Namudachate Pur Nasya Pur Namadaya Pur Nameva Vashishate Om Shanti Shanti, Shanti, Hari Om, Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha, Hari Om. Now, um, I just was disturbing me that I didn't clarify. Hari Ji, the context of, he called the ritual as frail rafts. The rituals get you bound to duality. Uh, bound to plurality rather, not you, not even duality. I'm very sorry. The rituals bind you to the pluralistic world. It doesn't help you evolve. All right. Thank you. Hari Om. <laughs>